this time. Mrs. Kane, I want to welcome you to the fireside chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and Dr. Jones, <laughs> for having me. I am not even reading a bio for her tonight, but <laughs> Mrs. Wandra Kane, as I said before, she's joining us from uh, Pennsylvania. She is a CTO of her own company, which is Wandra Kane yes. Interiors. Yes. Thank you so much. And <laughs> she's also into mentorship. She inspires, she builds, and she does all that she can, I am going to say, for Christ. Because whatever we do, we do for Christ. And so we're going to be talking with her tonight around the fireside. We are going to be listening and understanding some of the joys and even the challenges of building your own business. So once again, welcome and thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. All right, we are going to go into our program a little deeper because we're talking about the joys and the challenges of building a business. And you are a successful entrepreneur and you're also the COO of Wonder Kane Interiors. And, you know, when we think about business, we think about, is this something that was your childhood dream? Or is it something that you developed a passion for later in your years? How did this come about? Well, Dr. Janice, I would say it's a two-part thing. It was a dream I had as a young girl. But from where I was from, there wasn't no one who was an interior designer that looked like me. So I chose a different path. So I went into, I went to college. And after graduating from college, I went to work for a um Commercial, I was a customer service rep for a company. And my thing was always, I know, always inside of me was the one I always wanted to serve. So I love that job of serving people. But something inside of me was just like, I didn't want to be sitting at a desk. That's the truth. And I always had this thing of just wanting to be my own boss. <laughs> and But I didn't know the path really to take. So how I came about, it was a step. I, uh, step of getting where I got to. I was uh, sitting at that desk. I remember praying one time and I asked God, I wish I could be my own boss. So I thought about something that I could do that would transfer over to me being my own boss. So I ended up going to school at night. I know that I watched my grandmother and my aunts do hair. So I went to beauty school at night and that was my path of becoming an entrepreneur. Not that I wanted to do hair, but I knew that if I took that path of doing something that I knew how to do, that I would make money out of it and I could be successful. So I took that path of going into a salon, working part-time and keeping my full-time job until I felt like I was comfortable that I could quit that job. <laughs> so I opened my own beauty salon and the path just went on. And from that, I didn't go into, I love decorating and designing, but I didn't go to interior design until after I was married to my husband and he could see my gift. And he would say to me, you should go back to school for interior design. And I was like, I don't want to go back to school, but he pushed me in that way. And I went back to school and got my degree. And that's how I got on the path of following my dream of being an interior designer. Wow. That's that's a success story <laughs> indeed. And I hear so much coming out of what you're saying. Because <laughs> for one, you use wisdom. You you said you did not leave your full-time job. No, no, and, no, no. And, and that's a huge <laughs> lesson, isn't it, for people who are starting business? Grow and I share that with people a lot when they say, Oh, it looked like it's so fun to do. But as an entrepreneur, if you're your own boss, you need to know, for me, it was being able to being able to make sure I could take care of myself on my income. So the pay for me just being when I knew I felt like I was comfortable quitting that job, I would work off, save my money off of my part-time, of my full-time job, and I would live off my part-time job of doing hair. And when I felt comfortable, because I, owned, I had purchased a home at that time, <laughs> And I knew the the things that I had to pay for. I was a single woman. And I, once I felt comfortable believing that I could successfully have that same lifestyle, and that's when I chose my, you know, I changed my job. And I, for me, I felt like I, I give the same amount to my job as an entrepreneur as if I was working for someone else. I always, I go to work early. I do my best because I felt like if I'm working for someone else, I will do my best. I would want to be, so I do the same thing as, is up on work for someone else. And I always I'm working for God. So I always try to do my best. 
Wow, you 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 are dropping gems already. <laughs> I, because I, I I'm actually starting to write because you said start. I'm writing start where you are because you started where you were, and then mm -hmm. you said um you were doing for your company what you wanted to do for yourself. In other yes. words, you were actually utilizing the golden rule one to others as yes. you want to be done to you. And that's very significant um, in business because sometimes we go to persons' businesses and we just want to do our own thing, not mm -hmm. realizing that we have to treat others so that we can be treated well. Such a powerful story. So I, I want you to tell us a little bit. I know you into interior decorating, but is there a particular clientele that you serve or can I just pick up the phone and say, I need you to come down to Florida? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, uh, about few, during COVID, really, when I started, I say I kind of transitioned into saying I'm a traveling interior designer because it's like God started opening doors from people that I knew in other states. So I'm originally from Tennessee. So I was blessed to go to Tennessee and do some renovation projects. My main stationary base is in Eastern Pennsylvania. I have a friend in Alabama. I helped her design her house. So I just say, God, when you open the door, just I'll go. So I say I'm a traveling interior designer. So if you're in Florida and you call me, I will come. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I like that. And that's also part of, of good business metrics because you're not just thinking that let me just stay where I am here and if or come here I do it but you're willing to go across so long as I, you're able to to find that work yeah and I always have to fall back on well you'll see that I really fall back on my faith and my faith I used to pray the prayer of Jabez asking God to extend my territory and when I what I thought to extend my territory in the city I was in and the more I prayed that prayer, he started showing me there was doors opening up at other places. I just had not be afraid to go. So I just tell people I go all up and down to 78, wherever people ask, because I believe God has opened that door and he's extending my territory to go in those places. And as an interior designer, it depends on what the client wants. If it's a bill or something, I always ask that the contractor I work with, they be licensed and insured. And long as they're licensed in that state, they can be building the house. I'm just there to be the person who work with the client, pick out the selections out, design the layouts. But that contractor is licensed in that state, so I can still work in that state. So Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, you're <laughs> in this room. We are sitting at the fireside tonight with um, Mrs. Vondra Kane, and she is an interior designer. She actually, you're, you're hearing from her the gems that she's dropping in here. She started where she was, and now she's a successful businesswoman. But when, when I think about your kind of business, Mrs. Kane, I think that your business is one that brings joy to people. You know, <laughs> there is nothing like walking into my house and seeing everything in order and, yes. and, and beautifully put out. It doesn't matter the kind of day I have my home it's, I want to, it's my sanctuary and, yes. and so you know just thinking about the joy that you bring into people's life but when i when i'm thinking of all of this you know were there times that even though you were bringing joy to other people you had challenges as well talk to oh, us yes, about some of those <laughs> moments that you have had oh wow i, I can tell you a lot of those stories uh, I'll just think about, well, I said COVID, that was a challenge because, you know, during COVID, we're working on projects and then everything just shut down. And that was stressful to me. You know, my client was like, we're in the middle of their house designing or doing the construction and then we just had to stop. And just think if your kitchen is messed up and, you know, you want, so that was a challenge. But, you know, I prayed and I, I made it through and I always said, if I made it through that, you know, I know God, you got great things for me. And then I also think about, you know, when you talk about construction work or uh, renovations, you can go into a home and you hope everything will be going great. Mm -hmm. But once you start taking down walls and stuff, things can happen. And sometimes people are not nice. You know, you think, what happened to this lady or man? They were so nice. And, again. <laughs> and then, you know, it all comes back. I, I always take ownership for it because when the client call, they call me first. I don't blame the contractor. I don't blame nobody else. I take ownership and say, you know, it's my, I, I have to fix it. 
And it was a lot of time coming home. I was on my knees praying like, oh my God, please help me, Lord. What are we going to do? But I get strength and I get up the next day and I say, okay, it's a new day. Let's try it again. And in the end is, you know, you go through this and it's times I'll be like, you know, maybe I need to try to do something else. <laughs> this is stressful. But I just believe and have faith and I make it through. And, you know, dealing, I sometimes say, Lord, it's like I'm a psychologist <laughs> because you got to be, uh, you know, in the middle and trying to figure out reading people's minds. They can tell you one thing and then they want another thing. But that's part of, I think all of that is part of when you are business owner, you have to be able to, as a CEO of a company, you got to be able to handle all the situations. You can't just give up and quit because you, that's your job. You know, you got these pay, pay, bills to pay people. To, so you got to keep going. So that's part of my thing I've learned is you got to have a foundation. My foundation is faith. You know, when everything's been falling down, the only thing I do to do is pray and get back up and keep going. So that's part of my goal. Th three, 30 years of I being an entrepreneur, I always have just believed that everything is going to be okay. Even though days when I think, oh, no, it's not. But I just like, okay, I do a little cry, pray, and I come back out and, okay, let's do this. This is what we're going to do. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, you, know, you, you I, I am listening to you and I, each time you speak, you talk about prayer. And that is so important. It's, it's, it's life. It's like you go with it. It's your, your bag. It's, yeah, it's, it's the nearest thing to you. I mean, you carry it. it. You go with My, it. And, and, yes, and then I hear you talk about having that foundation. You talk about being able to read people. So that's like a, a discernment you're having there. You're yes. carrying so much with you. And it's these things that I believe have helped you to I weather whatever. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. They have. They have. Uh, but, you know, I, I I, I, went into the year of 2024 saying, God, I want to be more intentional and be able to listen and hear more. Because sometimes I know myself is trying to go all the time and do a lot. You you don't listen to what God is trying to direct you or the path that the person is either talking to you because your mind is on to the next project or on to other projects. So in this year of 2024, I realized that I don't need a lot to be successful. I don't need a lot of clients. I just need the clients that are directed to me. I could be okay and successful with fewer clients. So it took me a long time to get to that point. <laughs> it took me a point to a point to saying, okay, like clients are calling me and they'll say, oh, well, just let you know we're, we're interviewing other designers. So you know what I say now? That's fine. Because just like you're interviewing me, I'm interviewing, you know, I realize every client is not for me and every house is not for me to work in. And I have to know to be like, okay, Wanda, maybe this won't be a good fit. And that's something I learned as a business person to just think you need to have a discernment with your business and know when to walk away from something. Because sometimes you go into things and you're doing all this and maybe you shouldn't have took that and you should have just walked away. It was there for you and you just didn't notice that. But it took me years to get to that point of learning how to have a discernment and listen. And I'm quick to say when it's a job that I feel is more than I can handle, I will say, I thank you very much, but may I recommend you to another designer or another contractor? Because my team is small. Well, I'll say this. <laughs> the people that you see with me is small, but I always have three people with me, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You don't see them, but they're always with me. But so my team is bigger than people think. But I know that I have two contractors that their their business have picked up. So they're picking up more people. So I can't always call them and they be ready right away because they have other clients. So I have to, had to turn down jobs because I didn't have and I just don't want to work with any contractor. People that work with me, they said one just very picky because my thing is I'm representing my clients. Say so you call me Miss Jennings. You expected me to give you excellent service. You expected me to bring you the best contractors. So I can't just pick up anybody and let them do anything in your home. I have to make sure that they're doing excellent work. So that's what I've learned. This is, this is really good. This is really good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, again, I have to tell you, you guys, someone just came and coming to the room. We are talking with 
Mrs. Wondra Kane, and she is an interior designer. But just the gems that she's dropping in the room here tonight, they're profound. Because she talked about you don't, she doesn't need a lot of clients to be successful. And that's the myth that is out there, that you need hundreds and thousands of clients to be successful. But because she's so rooted and grounded in faith, she believes that God will send her just the right amount of client that will make her successful. That is deep. And 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 the other thing I hear you say is that not every client is for you. Yep, that's true. Not and I'm not for every client, so it's okay. I had to not, I used to take it personal, but I don't take it personal no more. I'd be like, okay, so that didn't work out. It's okay. So you have to learn not be not to take it personal and realize. That was a door closed for a reason. So in your business, as you grow, and it took me years to get this way. You know, I'm not saying I started out like this, but over the years I've learned and I'm learning like, Wanda, don't take it personal. I closed that door for a reason. And so I'm like, okay. And I pray and for, you know what, the phone is ringing. But that same thing, I know that's, that's what God used to, when I was in the salon and um, I used to pray and it would be slow days. And I will pray over my appointment book and say, God, you said you will supply all my needs. And Miss Janice, the truth is the phone will start ringing and the people will start coming. And I was able to hire other, a shampoo person, a person to keep the books. But that was me always keeping God as my foundation. So I had to restart. Remember, the same thing he did for me with that business, he'll do with me with this business if I keep him first. And when I started remembering that my foundation and I started praying that same thing over my interior design business and it started happening i'm like oh, god so he was you know he'll help you whatever you choose to do in life and i'm not trying to push my faith on anybody but that's who i am if you whoever you serve if you ask them and you believe them to help you they will help you and i try to teach that same philosophy to my daughter you know i tell her mom and dad may not always be there but if you have a relationship with god and keep him first you're going to be okay. Not that you won't go through things with your thing. You will be okay. And so I try to teach her that same thing. And I'm seeing that she's on a good path. She's going there. Beautiful. I, I, I believe that there are many persons in the room who are business persons and they're listening tonight. And this is really, this is really a, a, a deep conversations, big conversation because sometimes we go out on what I would call a limb by ourselves. And it's when we fall into, you know, challenging situations that we start to call on him. But it's not the same with you. You pray, you believe, and it happens. And if it we does. Don't... And, you know, I'll say, you know, sometimes it's quiet and I'm like, okay, God, nothing is happening. But I just have to realize there's a reason. And, you know, I just come down and I find other things and I'm like, okay, maybe I need to focus on this over here. And they're like, oh, I needed to clean up that desk and get all the tech stuff ready. And so, you know, when you're business, you, so I real, I'm starting to realize that I'm just seeing the things he's doing. So that's what I would just share with anybody that's willing to want to start a business. Just, you know, it's several steps you have to take. And and I do believe when 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 you're going in your business and as God is elevating you or you elevating, getting elevated, he will, if you ask him, he will bring you the right people to work with you to help you. And it will be people who you never would have even thought of. He would bring them to help you with your business. And you just have to be open. I like that. He will bring the right people and he will also move the wrong people. Yeah, yes, ma'am. He will move the wrong people. Because <laughs> everybody is not going to, oh, that's another story I could tell. But everybody, you know, you just have to know that everybody's not going to be there with you, the people that you think. But it's okay, you know. Um that's when I had to learn the part. Don't take it personal, Wanda. Just keep moving. Because of you sitting, stressing over that, and God trying to take you on another path, and you can't get there because you over here are like, oh, you got you, you just got to keep going. Business is something, as an entrepreneur, I will say the things I've learned over the year is sometimes we want to connect to people because of who they are, what they are, and that may not be what you need to do. And I had to learn it. Mm -hmm. And I have learned to know that it is nothing personal with no one or anything, but just you just got to know that it's just not that, that season for you. I should say that. Maybe it's not the season for that. And I think everything has a season for you, us in our life. 
I could say to me for my business, Before, when I was trying to go get one, my daughter was young, my husband traveled. So if I had been so wrapped up, busy, trying to be out in the working, I wouldn't have been able to be a good mother to my daughter. Now mm -hmm. my daughter's getting ready to graduate college. So I'm at a season in my life where if I need to go work or travel or do my job, I can do it. But back then, when I was trying to get started, I didn't understand that. But now as I'm grown, I'm like, oh, that's why I couldn't go there. Or I couldn't do that. I needed to be a mother to my child. And I'm, I didn't have family here, you know, so I needed to be with her. At every, and she'll tell me now, Mom, I'm so thankful you was with me at everything. I, everything she was at, I was there. And I needed to be with her. But if my business had been so busy, I wouldn't have been able to be with her because I would have been focusing more trying to go out. Not that I didn't want my business to do be that, but it just didn't happen for me that way. And now that I've grown, I feel like in my faith, in my whole walk of life, mentally and with wisdom and not I believe that I'll be a bit better business that's why I took on the part of saying I want to mentor other people because I believe everybody have a story that can help somebody else and I always said God I'm not trying to reach the massive but if I can help one person just sharing my story with them to tell them what's for you is for you just don't give up on your hope and your dreams you know just keep learning keep studying keep working your craft and it'll it'll happen for you wow This is such a beautiful story that is being told around the fireside tonight. We want to thank you everyone for coming in and sharing with us. Just sit in. If you have a comment, we use up the chat in this room. So if you have a comment, a question, you know, for the last 10 or so minutes, we do open the floor so that you can ask any other question that you have. But please feel free to use the chat as we go along. Drop your question, drop your comments, whatever you have, go ahead and use the chat. We do use it up. But, but you know, I'm listening to everything that you're <laughs> saying. And I'm wondering, have you ever had to Uh, pivot? Have you ever had to just take a pause and assess and reassess and do, yeah. you know, something like yes, this you were off track? <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, when I saw that question that you had was going to ask me, I was like, oh my God, I was just talking, telling a friend of mine, I feel like now I, I I'm at a pivot. You know, I don't know, maybe it's my age I am now and I feel more... <laughs> And I feel like, and I'm certain, I'm asking God, like, okay, I love interior design. I don't want to stop doing interior design, but I feel like I'm ready to pivot. And I don't know which way I'm just in a, you know, I always think about, I played basketball growing up and you know, the pivot, you have one leg down and you're moving the other leg around. That's how I feel like I am right now. I'm pivoting and I'm like, okay, which way to go? Because I feel like there's opportunities or doors and I just want to make sure I'm going in the right way. So I, I so I'm I'm in a pivot state right now, mm. and I'm just praying. But I've pivoted in my life a lot. Like I, when I married my husband, I was in Tennessee, and I got married. We moved to Alabama. We we lived in five states, and I kept falling behind my husband. So I'm used to God changing and just trusting Him. But we've been here now for 16 years, and like I said, my daughter's graduating, and getting ready to go off to law school now. So she's not coming back to Pennsylvania. <laughs> And I'm like, you know what, God? Okay. But I, I love, you know, that my work is here good. But like I said, I'm not chasing a lot of, I'm not thinking I have a lot of clients. I will be happy if God sent me two clients that want to million dollar homes and I could just work with them for a whole year. <laughs> I can be happy with that one client. I don't want to do 20 mm. projects at a time no more. It's, it's very stressful. So if anybody out there and you think about being an interior designer, it's a lot more to it than just fluffing pillows. I want to tell you. <laughs> It's a lot. And uh, you just got to be willing to put the work in because it's your business. So, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Um, excellent conversation we're having here. But I want to I want to ask you, if you were to just talk to, I know you have said so much, but <laughs> I, I do believe that, you know, a lot of more business persons need to hear this because, um entrepreneurs when they're building businesses and many of them are not familiar with the the, the ups and the downs and the challenges and the, and the and the and the growth that a business need what would you tell them at this time what would you tell these entrepreneurs at this time i would tell an entrepreneur you have to find what works for you uh like i told you when i first started out i worked a full-time job And I worked a part-time job and I 
had to make sure that I was, because when you're starting out, some of us don't start out with someone that's supporting your business. You may, that may, your income may be the only income you have. So just, just go at your own pace, you know, go at your own pace. I would say learn as much where your business is slow, continue to learn as much as you can about the business you're going into. Uh, continue to ask for people that you can, that will help lift you up, you know, as you try to go forth. Um, be willing to not give up. Uh, I, I see a lot of people start business and I go, oh, I thought, and they, oh, I gave up. I'm like, you just started six months ago. You can't, yeah. you, entrepreneurship is, you're your own boss. You, you're the one that's got to make it go. That's your dream. That's your thing. So just don't give up, you know, I said, I've been out as an entrepreneur. I started when, before I got married. So about 25, almost 28 years. And it was times, it was hard, but that was my dream, you know? So I would just tell anybody, just don't give up um, your dream and continue to work your craft and just know that you will connect with the right people at the right time. And don't take, don't count your blessings as a small thing. I think sometimes, I'll say this for myself, you look at other people on social media and you think they're doing so great and, oh my God, I wish I could be like them. People show you what they want you to see. You don't know for sure they're doing it. And I had to learn that. And I'm like, oh, so you you just don't run your own race. Run your own race, I would say. Run your own race. Stay focused. Stay believing in yourself. And if you don't have some, can't if you're feeling down, just ask God to bring somebody in your life to help you when you're down, to help lift you up. You know, just somebody encourage you because stay connected to Dr. Janice. You know, you need people in your life that's going to help you up. I share with Dr. Janice and I'll tell her, I told her this. I remember, I think it was during COVID and I had prayed over my business because it was crazy. And I was praying to God saying, God, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I asked God, I said, God, I just hope that when people see my work, that they could feel your presence in their home. I talked to God about that. Nobody else. Nobody didn't tell me. And I went on social media. I think it was like a, two or three days later. And she sent me a message. And she said, oh, my God, I was looking at your work. And I could just say, and I was like, and she could see. She said, I could see the presence of God through your work. And I just sit there and cry. So when I say that God will send you a word to keep you going, you never know. And I was, she just saw me on Facebook. So I learned to, when I post on social media, I always said the right people will see my work. And if I just keep going, then my work will speak for itself. You know, the opportunities will come. And I know, so because I know that my work is part of my purpose. I have learned that my purpose is serving people, helping people. I think everybody deserves a nice home, no matter how small it is or how big it is. It's their sanctuary. I want everybody to have a nice home. So I always give my all to it. So when you know your purpose and you start walking in your purpose and just stay focused on that as an entrepreneur, everything will work out for you. Beautiful, beautiful. And I, I do love that story because <laughs> I I actually just came on to, I believe it was Instagram and mm -hmm. I saw this beautiful decorating, whether it was a home or something. And I said, oh my God, like I could see God in the picture I'm looking at. And I started to type, I don't know. I never met you. I don't know who <laughs> this person like, is. You don't know me. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. don't know at that time I needed that word because I was like, okay, maybe I need to close up. Maybe everything is happening. And that was what I needed for me to keep going and believing in my business. And it was at that time during COVID and that message came to me. And I just thought like, okay, God, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep going. So it's little nuggets like that. You never know. Yeah. It's just trusting and believing and keeping Keep going. So if anybody out there that's starting any kind of business, if it's interior design, if it's whatever you're doing, if you could be bookkeeper for somebody else, be the best bookkeeper. Be is a lot of people need your help. I would have needed your help a couple of years ago, but I have a bookkeeper now. But I'm just saying, whatever gift that God has given you, go for it, you know, and just do your best and believe in your what you're trying to do. And it'll work out for you. Beautiful. And I'm glad you said bookkeeper because we do have an accountant bookkeeper right in the room here. Mrs. Oh, Kelly okay. is sitting in here right now and she's always at the fireside. Excellent work she does. She's up there in New York. So oh, yes, okay. you, you never know. You never know. You never know who, is, who God is going to send to you. You just mm -hmm. doing what is right and keep going. And that is such a powerful way to really just expand on what, what you're saying and what you're doing. But um, 
I know that you have so many lessons because I, I have them written down here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you were to really think, uh, uh, um, what are some of the lessons that the, 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 the ups and the downs of building your business that questions came to the task? What are some of those lessons you have really come away with? Um, I'll say a lesson I've learned as a in the interior as an interior designer working with other people is learning to give people grace because none of us are perfect. And when you have your own business and you have a team of people, what you met you just gotta learn to learn how to work with people. And that's something as a business owner, as a, as an entrepreneur, you need to learn how to deal with different people and how to handle situation, having more passion for people, um, being cautious of who you hire for your business. Um, there's so many things. Uh, there's just times when not the business side is knowing what you can do and what you can't do. I, that's my number one thing I had to learn. As a business owner, we want to wear all the hats. And it was at one point, I was trying to be my own bookkeeper, accountant and everything. And then finally one day I was like, God, I yield. I don't know how to do this. And I just hired to hire somebody to do my bookkeeping. And then we had a tax person. And it makes the job so much better. It, when you get stressed out, when you're trying to do all this stuff that I didn't, I'm not accounting. I'm not a bookkeeper. I didn't even really like math in school. I'm going to be honest, but I had to learn math as an interior designer. But some things you got to know what you're gifted to do and what you're not gifted to do and be willing to bring that person on to help you. It makes you as an, entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, you need to learn what you need for your business to help you be successful. So I would tell anybody, when you're starting out, knowing the things that you need to be a successful a, a lawyer, you know, when you never know what's going to happen in your business, if you can't afford a lawyer, at least have those people in your Rolodex that somebody that if that happened, you can call and ask for advice. Uh, like I said, a bookkeeper, or accountant, those people are things... People you wouldn't think you need as an interior designer. Yes, you do. If you're running a business and you're the CEO of that business, you need those people. Uh, being able to meet for us, like I said, I stage homes. And as I get older, I don't want to pick up furniture like I used to do. So I have to know, find me somebody strong to say, hey, I'm going to install. Can you come? So you just, with your business, know what you need to help you be successful. You, you're still going to be the best, but those people are going to help you be better. So I would tell you, knowing what you need for your business to help you get there. It will help take away stress from you and all those things. So I had to learn those things and just knowing what I could do and what I couldn't do and not be like, it's OK if I can't do that. So those are things I would tell a person, whatever business you're going into, figuring out what you need for that business to stay, to become more successful. That's a powerful takeaway right there. You have to know what you can do. As a matter of fact, you stay in your lane. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, let, ma let the, the, the right. accountant come, let the, the attorney come, let all of them come. You have to stay in your lane. Work and that's it, as a design. designer, I always tell people a contractor is not an interior designer, or an interior designer is not a contractor. You do your job, I do my job, we work together as a team and we can make people happy. But that's another thing is being able to speak, it's, you know, speaking to people, say this, we're going to have a little meeting. Let's marry everybody. This is what we're going to do. It's a team action here. And we're going to stay in our own lane. You do what you got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. But it, I had to learn my voice in the whole situation. When I first started out, I didn't have that confidence. And over the years, I've learned, I say to the contractor, this is how it's going to be. So when it's your business, you have to have that voice to speak for your business because you know how you want your business to go in the direction of being excellence. Beautifully said. So I, um, I know that you um, are in the mentorship business as well. You're not just do your interior decorating. You have taken on mentorship. Talk to us a little bit about that, what you do on that side. Well, how I got mostly into that, my husband and one of his friends, they started a mentorship they call it uh, 30 to give and all because people are so busy and we talked about how we just had somebody to because sometimes people don't want to mentor people for a long period of time so so what we do is for 30 days you I will mentor you and just give you everything you know help you point into it's giving back it's giving 30 days of giving back to somebody else you don't pay me but it, to me it's like me giving 
God, God gave me this gift and I want to share it with you. I want to help you. I'm going to tell you everything. And then I help you and tell you things to do. And also vice versa. I mentor somebody and then if something I need to know, there's somebody that can mentor me. So it's just 30 days of giving back to someone and helping them. And I really enjoy doing it. So you never know. I've got to talk to people in other countries and help them. So, and I'm like, wow. So I really enjoy doing it. Um, and I love just locally being able to, if I meet someone in design school, you know, I talk to them, I help them, I teach them the, the software programs I learn. I'm all about helping somebody else because I remember being that young girl wishing someone would help me. And I always said, if I ever got a chance, I wanted to give back to somebody else. Wow. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's the heart of everything. You are not just receiving, you're also giving back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Because once he has blessed you, then you, you bless others. So, so uh, if persons want to contact you, um, <laughs> this is such a beautiful business. I just love, I, it, 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 you know, there is something about interior decorating that warms my heart. Like just, just looking at the photos sometimes is just <laughs> so warming. <laughs> How can people find you for your services? Uh, so if you wanted to reach out to me, you can reach me by email. That's wandra at wcainteriordesign.com. Uh, you can reach me on my website. That's www.wcainteriordesign.com. And you always can find me on Instagram at wcainteriordesign or at wandra neil kane. Um, I'll say the thing about even if it's not interior design, like I said, I was a hairstylist for years. I own my own salon. So if it's someone who's thinking about opening up a beauty salon, I still know everything. No, I still have contact. So there's things that God has let me be able to learn in life that I'm willing to share.